Thank you, Rachel, for the introduction. Um, thank you all for being here this morning. I know I'm the, almost the last thing standing between you and lunch, so hopefully this will be informative and interesting for you. I'm going to talk, I'm going to use the GE Foundation as a little bit, uh, as, a, as a method to be informative about some of the ways that foundations think about philanthropy or corporations think about philanthropy. And I'm going to hopefully leave you with two, three principles that we operate with and a little bit of detail behind those. The three principles are looking at the engines that drive what you're doing, what makes what you do possible. The second is maybe a little bit counterintuitive, and that is that the interventions or the the interactions that we have in global health actually can be very simple and very impactful. And the simple interventions can actually outsize the impact that you think they might have. And the third thing is some pr simple principles of what I call implementation or simple um, principles of operation. A lot of what I talk about, uh oh, there we go. A lot of what I talk about today, actually all of what I talk about today, will be about the GE Foundation. I don't want this to be a commercial, but I'm going to use it, as I said, to be informative about the kinds of things that we do. General Electric, as you may know, is one of the largest companies in the world. It's the eighth largest company in the world in terms of revenue. But when you think about the GE Foundation, it's not about the money, it's not about the check. For us, it's about what we can deliver way beyond the capacity that we have as a large manufacturer. It's not about the equipment we can donate. It's not about the money we can give. For us, it's about capacity. It's about our skills and our employees. As one of the largest companies in the world, the eighth largest company in the world in terms of revenue, we're also the 15th large, largest company in terms of employees. We have over 300,000 employees around the world. And one of the principles that GE lives by and the things that we encourage from our, our employees is volunteerism. We volunteer globally. We give 1.4 million hours per year approximately of our volunteer time on GE time, on GE clock, in our communities so that we can support programs globally. So the engine behind what we do is not our funding, it's not our equipment that we manufacture, it's the 300,000 people around the world who give their time to enable what we do, as not only as a corporation, but, but as a foundation. With that engine, that engine of people giving over a million hours of their time, we're able to drive our mission. And our mission really is twofold. It's access to health care, it's access to education, and we provide access during disaster relief. We actually respond, we responded to Typhoon Haiyan, and we respond to all major disasters around the world by funding some of our partners who are in the disaster response world. The second part of our mission is building capacity. And we build capacity in, in a four-layered way. As you think of GE as a manufacturer, we make stuff. We make equipment. We make equipment in healthcare. We make equipment in power. We make water equipment. We make lots of different types of stuff. So, so at the bottom layer, we provide equipment as our building capacity. As I mentioned, we also provide our hours, our time, our people. And that enables us to build capacity. The second layer of, building, of, of our principal operation building capacity is truly capacity building in the field. It's training people. It's helping people learn new ways of practicing. And what we do, what I call, is we use our skills to help build the capacity of our partner skills, or the people that we're helping on the ground. So it's skill-based volunteering that GE volunteers do to enable the skills of our partners on the ground. And the last layer of our capacity building is around leadership. We really believe, GE as a company believes in leadership. It's been one of our principles for over 100 years. And so we believe as part of the foundation, it's important for us to teach leadership, to help leaders, uh, to help people in the field become leaders. Because where you have successful programs, you have leaders. People like Vanessa Carey, people like Raj Punjabi, who run Last Mile Health. Those are great leaders. And it's not only the leaders of the, of the NGOs and other uh, agencies that are out in the field, but it's the leaders on the ground. It's the hospital leaders. It's nursing leaders. It's ministers of health. And if we can take GE leadership principles and make le or help others become leaders, we're going to be much more successful. So the first part is our engine. The engine is our people, our engine is our volunteerism, the, the power of what we do. The second part is simple interventions. Now, one of the earlier speakers was talking about the complexity of some of the problems that we're trying to solve and the anxiety that produces, the multifactorial nature of the problems that we're trying to solve as people who are involved in global health who are trying to make, to make a change. 
But the reality is, if you think about simple interventions for those complex problems, the, inter the interaction that you're going to have, the impact that you're going to have, is going to be much greater than the simple intervention. It is going to way outsize what you think the impact is going to be with a simple intervention. Rachel mentioned that I'm an emergency physician. I've been practicing emergency medicine for over 30 years. We deal with very complex situations. We deal with very anxiety-producing situations. One of the most difficult situations or anxiety-produced situations that we can deal with is sudden cardiac arrest. Someone's heart stops beating. There's lots of issues you have to think about when that happens. Why did it happen? What do I do next? What are all the things I potentially have to do? Who do I call? When do I call them? Which drugs do I use? But if you just do one or two simple things in that very complex, scary scenario, you can have a tremendous impact. So in that example, just doing chest compressions or using a defibrillator can change the outcome dramatically. And we try to apply those principles at the foundation of sim simple intervention to have much greater impact than you might think you would otherwise have. So I'm going to use now the engine and simplicity to talk a little bit about some examples of what we do. And as I talk about these examples, I'm going to talk about our, princi our principles of imp implementation or execution. The first one is listening. So we started work, we work, so just, as an, uh, just to give you some scale of the foundation, we work um, in Africa, Southeast Asia, and Latin America. Most of our effort is in Africa, and we, I'm, I'm sorry, we also have a big program in the U.S. Now, most of, our, most of our effort outside the U.S. is in Africa. We started about 10 years ago in Ghana uh, for a variety of reasons. It was driven, in fact, by volunteers of ours who are Ghanaian who asked us to look at some of the problems in Africa, in particular look at some of the problems in Ghana, and see what we could do to make a difference in Ghana. We started to establish a presence there. We started to do some, some investigation of what we could do there. And as some of you may know, GE has a very large water business. It's actually part, now part of the power and water business. And the water business does lots of different things. They have desalinization plants and filtration plants. And they actually came to us, and this is part of the power of, of what we do. The GE employees came to us and said, what can we do to help? The GE water employees came to us and said, what can we do to help? And we said, well, we're looking at a variety of different issues here. And they said, well, we have filtration systems that we think we can apply in Ghana. Where, the water, where, where you need to have clean water. As many of you know, 4,000 people a day die, 4,000 children a day die as a result of not having clean water. So GE Water came to us and said, let's see what we can do. And they came back and they designed a filtration system that was deployable in Ghana and installed two systems and started them operating. And within a few weeks, the Ghanaian Minister of Health came back to GE Water and, and to GE Foundation and said, stop what you're doing. We don't like this. And what happened was GE, and their, in, with all good intention, with GE Water, all good intention, put in a system that had programmable controllers, had sophisticated software, and when the Ghanaians tried to use it, it was beyond the capability, the training and, uh, of, of the users, and also couldn't be fixed if, they, if it shut down, if it broke, et cetera. So the ministers of health came to GE Water, came to the GE Foundation, and said, we can't use these. GE Water went back to the drawing board, and several months later came back with a completely manually operated filtration system, which now can produce 50,000 gal 50, gallons of water per day per filtration cylinder. And these filtration cylinders, I don't have a picture, these filtration cylinders are about half my size. And they, f they produce 50,000 gallons of clean water per day. What we're now doing is we're taking those filtration systems, we now have 10 kiosks in Rwanda, where those filtration systems are providing water, clean water to the district hospital and at the same time pumping water up to the gates of the hospital and have a kiosk where the community members can come to that kiosk and acquire wa clean water for themselves throughout the community with the excess water from the hospital. And we now actually develop micro businesses around that where the hospital actually can generate revenue or at least uh, get back their costs for providing water to their community. And when the people come to this kiosk to get their clean water, there's also educational material about sanitation, about other health issues that they can um, learn from and accomplish. So, so we learned in Ghana that we had to listen to our partners. That if they say this is too complex, let's go back and change it and figure out something that you can actually use and something that will actually make an impact for you. The second principle of implementation that I, I'd like to cover and talk about is partnerships and collaboration. 
I was talking to someone earlier. Um, GE is a manufacturer. When we first went into Africa, we thought about equipment. Water's a good example. Well, we thought about equipment in a lot of other ways. We make a lot of medical stuff. And so we think about donating equipment and donating um, 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 x-ray equipment, ultrasound equipment, et cetera, into sub-Saharan Africa, Asia, Latin America. The problem is that when that equipment goes there, as many of you know, there's nobody there who knows how to maintain it. Nobody knows, who ha nobody knows how to fix it. Um, and, and in many cases, nobody knows how to use it. But more importantly, and, and more relevant to this story, nobody's there to maintain it or fix it. So we started looking at this problem and said, you know, there's a solution to this. And we reached outside of ourselves. We talked to Duke University. We talked to a group called Engineering World Health. We talked to the ministers of health. And we talked into the VA system. The last example I'll use is about scalability. I'm running out of time, so I'm talking more quickly. Um, the last example is about scalability, which I mentioned. In uh, sub-Saharan Africa and around the world in developing countries, there's a vast shortage of anesthesiologists or people who can deliver anesthesia. There's a shortage of sur surgeons as well, but much more so on the anesthesia side. We're partnering with Ministry of Health and Vanderbilt University and Kajabi Hospital north of Kenya to train nurses to deliver anesthesia safely. Currently, only about 6% of the, of the women who need surgery, either for cesarean section or postpartum hemorrhage, actually have access to a person who can deliver safe anesthesia. So what we're doing in partnership with Kajabi Hospital is we're training nurses to become nurse anesthetists and providing those services in western Kenya. At the end of this four-year project, in collaboration with the folks I mentioned, we will have 40 additional nurses in western Kenya who can deliver anesthesia, where currently now there are zero anesthesiologists who can safely deliver anesthesia. There's one that goes through periodically. We will have 40 at the end of four years. And in terms of sustainability and scalability, we'll have eight trainers who can subsequently, subsequently, subsequently train additional nurses and others to provide safe anesthesia in Western Kenya. We're hoping to broaden that beyond just Western Kenya to the rest of the country in collaboration with the Ministries of Health, the Minister of Health, and then hopefully we can scale that and it goes beyond just Kenya into the rest of East Africa and to other countries that are desperately in need of anesthesia services. So I'll stop there as, as our examples. I just want to leave you with the three principles I talked about. One is our principles of implementation. The second one is simple interventions have the greatest impact. Think simple when you have a complex problem. Don't think about complexity and how you're going to solve all the elements of it. And the last one is leverage the engine of the people that you have. Leverage the skills of the people that you have. Leverage the capacity of those people to build capacity. For us at GE, it's not just about the money. It's not just about the check. It's about the brains that we have. It's about the heart that we have. And it's about building capacity and making a change in global health by using those three elements, money, brains, and heart. So thank you.